With the seizure of the bridges over the Douve, General Collins alerted the 4th Infantry Division for an attack toward Vallon and ordered the 79th Division to prepare one regimental combat team for movement on four hours' notice, even though the 90th Division had not yet reached its new objective. The northern flank of the 9th Division was still exposed to attack as the division moved westward. The defense against attacks from the north was to be taken over progressively by the 39th Infantry Regiment and then the 90th Division. The 39th Infantry was ordered to hasten the clearing of Orglande, and in the morning of June 17th, two of its companies entered the town and cleared the remaining enemy resistance. Meanwhile, plans were made to exploit the bridgehead over the Douve. The 60th and the 47th Infantry Regiments made spectacular progress westwards in their drive to seize the principal roads leading out of the peninsula along the western corridor. The two regiments moved generally along the axis of the two main east-to-west roads. Enemy forces west of the Douve were believed to be small, but had not been identified. The 60th Infantry struck westwards toward Hills 145 and 133. The enemy had evacuated New, and the regiment moved down the New Barneville Highway without encountering any resistance, except from small straggler units. The 47th Infantry was pressed vigorously on verbal orders to capture Hills 90 and 110. When the division field order named these hills as objectives at 1500 hours, the regiment had already captured them. Its battalions then spread out to reach the corridor between saint lô deauville and saint savieux de pierpont At 2200 hours, the 1st Battalion reached grand Honville and cut the last main exit from the peninsula. Progress had been so good on June 17th that General Collins encouraged the 9th Division to go as far as possible that night and to complete sealing off the peninsula. The 60th Infantry received verbal orders to continue to barneville sur mer and cut the coastal road there. Elements of the 47th Infantry were already astride that same road farther south. This mission was given to the 3rd Battalion, which was supported by five tanks, four tank destroyers, and four half-tracks. Two miles west of the line of departure, an enemy anti-tank gun knocked the tracks off the leading tank destroyer. After some delay, the task force moved on, but at the crossroads north of Saint-Maurice, it unintentionally continued southward to Villeau, arriving at 0200 hours. After a patrol had nearly missed an encounter with an enemy bicycle force, the battalion advanced northwest through a ridge towards Barneville. Reaching the nose of the ridge at 0500, the troops could look down on the town, which appeared deserted. The 47th Infantry was also ordered by General Collins to push on. At 2300 hours, the 3rd Battalion resumed its march towards saint savier de pierpont to secure the east edge of the corridor and block the secondary road through this town. Passing over lanes and trails so close to German positions that enemy voices could be heard at times, the intelligence section, leading the column, was finally challenged. Its 12 men opened fire with Tommy guns, and a short fight broke out, which involved part of Company L. When the enemy outpost was at last overwhelmed, Company K led the column to saint savier de pierpont Resistance around this town was cleared out the following day. In the 60th Infantry Zone, units of the 3rd Battalion remained in position to cover from the high ground overlooking the town, while Company K entered with the tanks, the tank destroyers, and the platoon of heavy machine guns. A few German MPs were taken prisoner. During the day, the enemy made no concerted attempt to regain the town, although brief firefights developed with small enemy groups, which intended to pass through and were surprised at the presence of the Americans. Larger enemy units tried to break through the 60th Infantry's string of positions extending from barneville sur mer all the way to saint jacques de noeud The longest column of infantry and vehicles was spotted west of Hill 145. All available guns of the 60th Field Artillery Battalion concentrated on the head of that column. The fire was then adjusted to creep five miles up the congested road. Infantry and anti-tank fire joined the artillery. The heavy fire destroyed 35 vehicles of different types, along with numerous machine guns, mortars, horse-drawn wagons, and motorcycles. The most serious threat to the 9th Division's northern flank developed at saint jacques de noeud where the 1st Battalion, 39th Infantry, had gone into position on the night of June 17th. 
Following the capture of Orglande, the battalion was only ordered to follow the 60th Infantry, presumably to aid in protecting the division's lengthening northern flank. The battle began at 0430 hours, with machine gun fire covering the entire battalion front. It was difficult to find targets in the darkness, and mortars were firing without observation. At times, the Germans came within grenade-throwing distance. Colonel Tucker, commanding officer of the 1st Battalion, ordered a withdrawal south to positions near an east-to-west road running into saint jacques de -Noux. Communication with the higher headquarters was established only after the withdrawal. General Eddy approved the withdrawal but ordered the battalion to hold its new line and promised support by a division artillery concentration. With the support of the artillery, the 1st Battalion moved out again to regain the lost ground shortly after 0900 hours. 250 dead were found where the attack took place, and 60 wounded Germans were taken prisoner. In the drive toward the Douve River from the 14th to the 16th of June, elements of three divisions were identified. As the 82nd Airborne and the 9th Division approached the Douve, some of these units retired across the river, and others probably withdrew northwards, but their exact location was unknown. On June 18th, it became obvious that some German units wanted to evacuate certain personnel from the peninsula. But the problem on the German side was that they also had to delay to the maximum the American bid to cut the peninsula to prevent having their best troops trapped north of the breakthrough. Most of the German units in the Cotentin had suffered severe losses in the fighting to date. The 91st Division was so badly decimated that it could scarcely be counted as a division at all. Field Marshal Rommel thought he could prevent the American advance west by moving the 77th Division down from the Madurai to saint savier le vicomte but he still had no intention of risking the isolation of the 77th Division if the peninsula should be cut. How long was it a good gamble to leave the 77th Division committed against the increasing American pressure? In anticipation of American breakthrough, the 84th Corps ordered on June 15th the reorganization of German forces in the peninsula into two combat groups. Combat Group von Schlieben was to defend Cherbourg, and Combat Group Helmick was to pull out to the south. The breaking of the Medere line and the drive west had compromised the deployment of the 84th Corps by extending its line of defense. The problem was brought to a head when the 82nd Airborne Division established the bridgehead across the Douve. General Helmick was granted permission to withdraw his combat group on June 17th and was killed that same day during an air attack. General Stegman, commanding the 77th Division, was also killed while he was directing various elements of his division in their attempted escape from the peninsula. About 1,400 men of the 77th Division managed to escape through the American lines. This number comprised roughly half the division's strength. The rest remained trapped in the peninsula and the division's artillery was completely destroyed. The cutting of the peninsula by the 9th Division marks the end of a phase in the 7th Corps' operation in the Cotentin. With the southern flank of the Corps secured and the remaining German units bottled up in the peninsula, the Corps could now make a coordinated attack to its final objective, the port of Cherbourg. On June 18th, the 47th Regiment moved to Fierville as division reserve and the 357th assumed responsibility of the Corps' left flank security. The other two regiments of the 90th Division had reached their objective line, relieving the 39th Infantry of the responsibility east of the Douve. Protection of the Southern Line gradually fell to 8th Corps, which became operational on June 15th. It took over the 101st and 82nd Airborne Divisions, as well as elements of the 90th Division. With these adjustments, the 7th Corps, with three divisions, was free to start the drive on Cherbourg.